Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Dyson DC21 Motorhead. This was the second canister vacuum available from Dyson in the US, and uh, compared to the DC11, their first one, it was a huge jump in performance thanks to the electric motorized powerhead. I was fortunate enough to find this vacuum cleaner at basically a garage sale, and uh, it's pretty banged up and dirty and smelly, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a full tune up and we'll see how it works. All right, so this is my first time taking a close look at this machine, and it's it's definitely gonna need a full tune-up. Uh, I did test it before I bought it, and it does run, uh, but like the hose and wand are nice and dirty, um, and it smells. The dirt bin seems like it had pet dander sitting in it for uh, quite a long time, and I emptied it before I brought it in, and I could I could smell it outside. So that's probably gonna need at least uh, some of these parts washed. I would probably take this whole thing apart and clean it, because I think on this, it should be pretty easy with the screws. Uh, easily visible right here. Um, hopefully, we'll see. Here's the pre-motor filter on the vacuum and a clip lifts up and you can access it. Uh, this is the uh, main filter that's gonna catch the dust that doesn't get separated by the cyclones. So it's really important that you wash it and check it on a regular basis. On this filter, it says uh, it's recommended that you wash it every six months, which is pretty good. On the new ones, they say one month. Uh, but it's a huge filter, takes a while to plug up. Hmm, surprisingly that hose just disconnects there. That's good. And it's clogged. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but that's plugged up. This is, um, that's really, yeah, really dirty. Uh, so this is going to definitely need a full cleaning and tune up. So this will be fun to do. Here's the power head for the vacuum cleaner, and uh, these actually do a pretty good job on carpet. Uh, better than any of the air-driven tools that Dyson has offered. It's got an early version of the ball swivel joint on the back and a large wheel underneath. And it's a little different on the newer ones, but it's similar to what they use now on their stick vacs and uh, their canisters. Uh, the brush roll itself, the brushes stick out a good amount and they're pretty stiff, but they are sparse. You can see how spaced out they are. This brush roll has a dedicated motor that can spin the brush at a very high speed. So while it may not look that impressive immediately, you actually do get pretty good results. So there was a blockage in there, and you can see that little notch in there. That's where the cable starts. Now what's weird is that the cable, maybe the glue came up, but this cable inside here is disconnected from the wall of the hose. I, it was probably glued at one point, and that came up. So I don't know if you can see that, but what that means is dirt built up behind it, and it caused that blockage that you see here. So I don't know what I can do about that. Have to keep an eye on it, at the very least. I just test out the power head for the first time. I haven't tuned it up or anything. And uh, I'm pretty impressed. So I forgot how well these groom. But what I did remember was that these were the best cleaning Dyson canisters. And yeah, it, it definitely is. And it looks like as an everyday vacuum, uh, it would work more than well enough for your needs. So I think this will work with my other Dyson tools. So the only thing that's missing is the dusting brush. So I will purchase one of those. Uh, other than that, I'm just going to give this thing a good cleaning and, uh, and wash a bunch of parts. And hopefully I'll be able to show that, document it, and show you how I take this stuff apart. Um, and we can see the before and after. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna get started. Okay, I'm gonna start taking this apart and <clears throat> I'm gonna separate everything that can be washed. I'm going to separate it from the cleaner itself. separates. It's a lot like, I guess, like the DC-25. The HEPA exhaust filter cover is held in with a clip. And there's the HEPA exhaust filter, and uh, it was completely shot. That black stuff is carbon dust, but it stunk, and uh, it was beyond saving, so I did replace that. With that filter off, you can see the how the exhaust air exits on the machine, and again, just strange the way that it does a, a path around this, and even this, you can see how they took uh, how they flowed the air so seriously. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I attempted to remove the hose, and I didn't remove it completely, but I removed the stowaway clip that is connected to the bottom. Uh, and then I took apart the power head. Uh, the first thing I did was I removed the end caps, and they take a little finagling. And then the brush roll, both sides of it, it's in two parts, just comes out, and that I washed. Uh, then I disassembled the uh, bin and I vacuumed that out. There was a lot of leftover dirt from the previous owner. And I vacuumed off the shroud and the cyclone exit. 
Now it's time to take the cyclone assembly apart. It's pretty easy. Uh, first, to make it easier, I popped the bottom off the skirt, and you can see that O-ring that fell out as well. Uh, that Both of those got washed, set that aside. Uh, and then everything on this comes apart from the top down. You can see uh, those screws at the top, that is a size T15 torque screw. So you need a T15 torque drive, and I carefully use a drill. The top then just comes right off. And then there are seven more screws on the inside. Just remove those. And then the top of the Cyclones comes off. Wash that. Underneath that is a nice big rubber gasket. And I can wash that. And now that's separated and wash everything. Now I'm getting ready to dust and clean off and disinfect the entire vacuum. Uh, I started by just sweeping it off. That's going to get a lot of the excess dust off of it. Uh, hair likes to build up on that little wheel there. Uh, and then with uh, all-purpose cleaner, I just uh, wiped it all down. Uh, just doing that made it look a lot better. Uh, I then went over it with uh, rubbing alcohol to get the paint scuffs off of it. Uh, here I cleaned the cord and what I did was I used alcohol and I just ran a cloth along the cord and that actually got a bunch of grime off of it. Uh, so I do that with all the vacuums that I tune up. I then, any of the dust that I had kicked up uh, cleaning it, I swept off. I've got a nice bench vacuum with a long hose. Very handy for that. Uh, I then used a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol to get into all the little nooks and crannies uh, on this vacuum. There's a, a lot of small little crevices that dust like to build up in. So I made sure I tried to hit all those, clean the gasket, clean around the, uh, the vacuum exhaust. Uh, and then swept off again all the, the dust that I had kicked up. Now I'm going to clean up the power head, uh, and here I first uh, wiped off the end caps. Those will build up with fine dust, so I want to clean those, and then I oil oiled them at the end. But I used alcohol to get all the paint scuffs off the side of them, so they looked, uh, looked great afterwards. Uh, then I swept it off, and I didn't show it, but I ended up actually polishing the plastic on the inside of the uh, brush roll housing and the outside too. And I use a product called Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish, and it's a great plastic polish. And you're actually polishing it so you get a nice long-lasting shine. And it's just what I've used for years. So I wiped it down with all-purpose cleaner and then rubbing alcohol to disinfect it. Uh, then I got into uh, areas I couldn't get into easily with a Q-tip. Uh, and then I swept off any of the excess dust that I built up. Unfortunately, some stuff was discolored, but that was really just the best I could do. Uh, now that it's uh, cleaned up, I can reinstall the brush roll. At this point, I had washed both of them. And then uh, I lubricate, those are sleeve bearings in the end caps. And I just put a drop of 3-in-1 motor oil on the inside of them uh, and then just reattach the end caps. You have to kind of turn them uh, halfway, I guess 90 degrees, and then, uh, then the lock in place, as you can see here. There you go. Uh, then I reinstalled the bottom plate, and the bottom plate is held on with seven Phillips screws. So with a Phillips screwdriver and a T15 torque bit, I was able to get to everything that I needed. Now it's time to reinstall the wheels, which I had washed. I removed them. There's a uh, washer that I just put onto both ends and then the wheels themselves, and the wheels are held on by C-clips, which actually took me a little while to pop on, but I eventually got it, and the other side. And then the little uh, uh, wheel covers, I don't know, hubcaps. Those just snap in. 
Uh, at this point, the little wheels underneath uh, were, uh, the axles are dried out and they were very noisy. I used more 3-in-1 oil and I lubricated each of those little wheel axles. You don't have to do this, but this makes them roll a lot quieter on the carpet. And uh, you have to be really careful that you don't have any excess oil because obviously oil could stain and damage your carpet if any of it's left over. So I do this, but you really, really want to be careful and make sure you get everything out of it or any of the excess oil off the wheels, which I did uh, before I started using it. Uh, now that I had washed the bin, I cleaned the gasket and I cleaned the inside of the bin as well and I was using alcohol to get the paint scuffs off of it. I ended up polishing the plastic bin as well with mothers and then I got paint scuffs off the other parts. That was the, fil the pre-motor filter cover, cleaned off the tools after they had been washed. The litter pickers were uh, shot on this so I just got rid of them. Now I'm just cleaning off the cyclone top. Uh, the cyclone top had missing paint. Uh, that was just the best I could do. Uh, and then I cleaned and disinfected the hose. Uh, this wand can't be removed, so there's really only so much I can do. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of dirt built up uh, on the inside of this wand, and I used alcohol to just get all of it off. And uh, there were still some missing paint scratches on the wand, but I did the best that I could. And it came out all right. Uh, now, to put the cyclone assembly back together, you first have to put this uh, rubber gasket back in place. And as long as you line it up, it can go in any way. The part is symmetrical, even though it has, uh, even though it looks pretty complex. Just get it all nicely seated back into place. And it'll look just like that. Looks great now, nice and clean. Then I put the cyclone top back on, and that can go anyway. Uh, then I had to reinstall the seven screws that uh, screw in the cyclone top to the uh, the rest of the cyclones. Again, using a T15 uh, torque drill bit. Once those are back into place, you can put the top of the cyclone with the carrying handle back on top, making sure it's facing the right way. And then there are, I believe, seven more screws that go on the outside. And I always just put them in using a, like kind of a star pattern. And I use a cordless drill, but you have to be really careful because it's really easy to break the soft plastic on any of these, uh, you know, appliances. So I use one, but I do it carefully. It saves a ton of labor. Uh, now, uh, to put the, uh, the bottom skirt back on, I first refitted the O-ring, which you'll see it fits into that notch there. Uh, and then to actually get the uh, skirt back onto it, it took a lot of, it took quite a bit of work. And I had to use a product called Liquid Wrench around the outside of the tabs. There's three tabs that line up on the, uh, on the Cyclone assembly itself. And getting those to finally click in, I had to use a little bit of uh, lubricant to get them to snap into place, but eventually they did. And then it was back together, disinfected, and ready to go. After a little bit of work, the Dyson's finished. So overall, I think it came out pretty good. Uh, it does have some permanent scratching on it. There's things that I can't do anything about. Uh, on the Cyclone assembly there, there is some permanent scratching, uh, but uh, I'm just gonna have to settle for that. Can't do anything about that. Uh, here's the bin after uh, cleaning it, and although it's not perfect, it still has some clouding to it after polishing it. It came out pretty good, so at least it'll show you what, you, what it collected. And here's the power head. As you can see, uh, the it's still a little bit clouded. I couldn't get that perfect on the inside. And this hose, I ran a towel through it, but I couldn't get this perfectly clean, and I didn't want to risk taking this all apart and having it fall apart. So I didn't disassemble it, but it, there's no blockages and uh, it's gonna work exactly like it should. This power head's actually in pretty good shape uh, considering how beat up this vacuum was when I got it. 
I did have to replace a couple parts on the machine. The dusting brush that stores on the back of the vacuum was missing, so I replaced that with a generic replacement. The color's a little off, but it seems like it'll work just like the original. And I had to replace the HEPA filter. The HEPA filter that it came with was just shot, it stunk, so I had to replace it. So now the vacuum doesn't have any odors when you run it, which is great. Uh, they gave me that Dyson turbine tool, which I also gave a tune-up, and I thought we could test that. And then I think I have the Right Bear floor brush that would go with this era Dyson from maybe like 2005 to 2009. This is an excellent hard floor tool. I'm going to use this one with it. I don't know if this vacuum originally came with that style. I think it did, but I don't know if that's the right one for it. It just friction fits on, but it does fit, and it's going to work, so we'll use that with it. Uh, and now that it's ready to go, uh, we can test it out. Now I'm going to show you how the Dyson works. Uh, I've made a big mess here. Uh, this is a mixture of fine particles, uh, glitter, and uh, fake pet hair and paper. And we'll see how it does on this red rug. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to show you how the other tools work and uh, all the different things you can do with it. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it works. So that for that first pass, you can see uh, it did leave a little bit behind, uh, but what that is, those lines there, um, the brush roll itself is protected by those little bars that run on the bottom plate of the power head. And those are there so that uh, in case, if you ever pick up a sock or a shoelace or something like that, that could jam this, that'll help protect those plastic parts. So they got away from it and the new ones leave nicer lines, but uh, it did do a good job. So. Let's continue. Uh, taking a look at the rug here now that uh, I'm all done. Uh, the rug looks great again. Uh, it did take several passes to get everything. The ground and pet hair took several passes to pick up and uh, the glitter took several passes too. Glitter is notoriously hard for a vacuum to pick up in general like, to get all of it so you'll generally find that some will get left behind. Take a look at that. You can see all the glitter and pet hair and uh, yeah looks like uh, yeah looks like it did good so let's continue and uh, you can see the shroud here is starting to build up with a little bit of that pet hair already. And then this one does not all just, it doesn't all just drop out the bottom on this vacuum cleaner. You have to uh, remove this cup by pushing this button. That separates, you can see into there. Uh, and then this would just all dump out into the trash. Uh, not bad, this is fine. Uh, one kind of a strange feature on this, uh, this wand is permanently attached to the hose. Uh, you can't remove it, it's all one assembly and um, any attachment you want to use just connects right here, and you can see how big the wand end is and how small the attachment is. But uh, for daily dusting, uh, just cleaning around your home, I think it would work just fine. Uh, but if you needed to get this into a more, I guess, cramped area, uh, like if you were cleaning out a car, this is uh, pretty bulky and uh, wouldn't be ideal for that. But uh, it's got great suction, so I think just for daily dusting, I think it'll be fine. So uh, eventually I got everything, but I'll be honest, uh, that took a lot longer than I was expecting. And the rainbow uh, cleaned this up a lot faster. And I think that this Dyson probably has more just pure suction than the rainbow does. So that was weird. 
I didn't have this uh, pushed down all the way after I finished the first two sections, so I did push it down. So it seems like maybe here it did, uh, it picked up faster and better. So that could have just been me. I would have hoped that that would have gone a little faster. And uh, holding this just for dusting, uh, it does get heavy after a couple minutes. So uh, here's a comparison between the newest version of the Dyson Turbine Tool and uh, this first one. So uh, Dyson did have turbo tools available before, but they weren't designed by Dyson. I think this is the first one that was engineered in-house. And you can see how huge it is. Uh, but these have a unique feature where they split the air path for the, um, the air turbine and the suction path for the dirt. So the, unlike most turbo tools, the dirt is going through a separate path uh, and it's not going through the turbine that's driving the brushes. And I, Dyson had it patented. I'm surprised the patent's not expired yet because they've been making these for like 15 years, but uh, no one else does it and it's a good design. And so this one has the same thing, but it was an early version of that. And we'll see if it bogs down and how it does on this, uh, uh, all this pet hair. There's a button here. If you push it, it shuts the brush off. I'm not sure why you really want to do that, but you don't want it, you turn it off. That's nice. I did something. I clogged it. I had to reset it. Now this thing, although it was uh, kind of comically oversized, it worked great. Uh, it was kind of, you could hear kind of bogging down a little bit, but it didn't stop and it got through the whole thing. And um, so this thing takes quite a bit of power because that Dyson's got a lot of suction. You know, this is kind of an old Dyson technology and uh, yeah, it still worked really well. Was that last demonstration did not go uh, as expected. Uh, while I was cleaning up just shredded paper uh, on the couch, it got a blockage. And I think it's, um, it's a problem with this vacuum, with this hose. I mentioned earlier how the cable on the inside is no longer glued to the inside of the hose. So I think it's easy, easier for stuff to obstruct it. And that's what happened right here, uh, right about here on the hose, which is pretty close to that swivel collar. Uh, right about here, um, I could feel the cable in there and there was a blockage. So I had to kind of wor work that out and, uh, and eventually it unplugged. But, uh, so with that noted, I won't be picking up anything too big. <laughs> Stick with, I guess, finer particles. That is a problem though with this particular Dyson, which I guess might need a new hose if I was going to use this on a daily basis. So, all right, the Dyson's all set up to clean bare floors and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and we'll see how it does. Uh, with the power nozzle. And with the power nozzle itself, you have to shut the brush roll off so it won't scatter the dirt all over the place. So this is, these are just fine light particles. So that did a beautiful job. Especially for a power head with the brush roll shut off, uh, that did a great job. Now, larger things like Cheerios that would push around. I mean, earlier it got a blockage with a bunch of paper, so, um, you know, you'd pick up the bigger things, but then you could use this in lieu of a broom and dustpan just with the, uh, the vacuum head itself. So, let's continue.
uh, in the edge in the corner there. It's been great. And this actually glides pretty nicely now that it's all tuned up. Very easy to roll around. It's very smooth feeling. Uh, well, uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, this did a great job on hard floors. And uh, for everyday crumbs, I think it would be just fine. Uh, now I'm ready to clean uh, using the Dyson hard floor tool that I think would have either come supplied with this or be available as an extra option when this vacuum cleaner was new. As you can see, it's got little gates in the front. It's got two large wheels. Uh, and I remember this working really well. So we'll see how it does. This time I put down rice and uh, wanted to give it a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, I'm expecting this to be able to get larger stuff though, so then. I just finished the first pass here, and again, it did a great job. So I was kind of expecting that. These hard floor tools work really well. Um, you may have to lean it back for larger things like Cheerios, but no big deal. Uh, and uh, yeah, but that was a clean sweep. It gobbled everything right up. So let's continue. Uh, so there you have it. Either tool did a great job. You know, I do prefer a dedicated hard floor tool. Uh, they tend to work better overall. But I will say the power nozzle with the brush roll shut off, I think just for everyday crumbs, would be fine. So uh, they, they both did a fantastic job. All right, now that I've sucked up a whole bunch of dirt with this, let's take a look at the bin and the filters and see how they're holding up. The bin pops off easily. There's a little bit built up there, and I've got some pet hair or lint basically built up on what's called, uh, this is called the shroud the screen on the inside. You do wanna keep that clean, because if this plugs up, uh, you won't get any suction. So you have to brush this off from time to time, but when you empty it, that's a good opportunity to take a look at it. And along with that, let's take a look at the pre-motor filter. So, wow. So that was a good amount of dirt. That was a, a few bins worth and a lot of fine dust and everything. And there is, I don't know if you can see, you can see a little bit of glitter made it through the cyclones. Yeah, so it did, uh, there is some glitter on the filter as you can see, but glitter is a hard thing for a vacuum to cope with. And uh, that was a lot in one go. So, you know, if there's uh, 20, 30 pieces of glitter on the filter, no big deal. But as far as dust, uh, it looks spotless. So uh, the filtration system works great. That's why, I, that's why I like these vacuums, you can just, you just fill them up, dump them out, and move on. It's really nice. So there you have it. This is the Dyson DC21 Motorhead. Uh, to this day, I would still say this is one of the best canisters that Dyson's ever produced, even though this machine's pretty old now. Uh, it works great on carpet, um, and it's a really versatile machine. As you can see, it did a great job on bare floors with both the power head, which surprised me, and the, um, the excellent hard floor nozzle. The turbo head works great on furniture, and if, as long as you have the room, it would be good for cleaning out a car. And uh, yeah, there's a lot I like about the vacuum. It's pretty quiet. The hose is nice and long, uh, decent attachments. So overall, I'm pretty impressed. Um, as far as drawbacks, it's because the wand is permanently attached, you can see how large this is. When you're dusting, it's almost like you're doing so with like a baseball bat. Something is wrong with the hose on this particular one too. And uh, I may have to get it replaced, but I'll just be careful. It blocked up at one point while I was demonstrating it uh, because there is something wrong with the hose on mine specifically. You know, what are you going to do? This vacuum's probably between 12 and 14 years old. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.